We're talking this morning to Dr. Philip Stieg, and we're talking about meditation and the brain. And we all know that stress is really bad, not only for our bodies, but for our brains as well. And because you're a renowned neurosurgeon, can you paint a picture for us as to what is going on in the brain when we are stressed? When we're stressed, there is uh, the physiologic response, and I think the, the extreme of it is the flight and fright response that one has when, say, you see a, a lion or something like that, where you know, your pupils will uh, constrict, your heart rate goes up. But in the brain, there's also the release of hormones like cortisol uh, and increased activity in particular parts of the brain, something called the amygdala, uh, uh, and the emotional uh, segment of the, uh, the brain called the limbic system. All of this is activated uh, so that we can respond to the stressful situation. So that's what happens when we're stressed. To paint a picture, if you will, for what happens in the brain when we meditate. Well, the beauty of meditation is, and there are different forms of meditation, as you know. You know there's a, there's a form of, of, of mindfulness and compassion and love that, that allow us then to focus on a particular, either our heart rate or a thought or an image. And in so doing, one can then overcome all of the extraneous influences, the stressors in our life. And uh, uh, by doing that, uh, it, it, it changes the, we know that it changes the electrical activity of the brain, certainly at the time, uh, time of doing meditation. Uh, what we don't know for sure is what's the long-lasting impact of that. But it calms the brain down, reduces the secretion of those hormones, uh, and uh, uh, it gives the individual an overall sense of well-being. To the point that we are now using this in therapy for certain t types of disorders. You've heard, I'm sure, people say, ah, I've tried meditating and I couldn't seem to relax. I couldn't get my brain uh, to focus. Um, yeah. Do you have any tips? The, number one, there are different types of meditation. Mm -hmm. you know, as I mm -hmm. said, there's the focused attention, mindfulness. One form may work better for you than another. I certainly think that you know, if somebody says they're trying it, but they're doing it alone, you know, they go into a quiet room and think they're going to be able to learn it. I don't recommend that. Uh, you know, I would either go to a class or, you know, if you can afford it, get an individual trainer to try to help you do that. There are always people that won't be able to do it, but getting a uh, someone that can help instruct you uh, in the area, I think, is really important. And isn't there a reason that it's called a practice? <laughs> it's something that you just get better at as you do it. Hopefully. Well, I mean, yeah, and that's demonstrated, you know, I mean, number one, you know, as well as I, since you are doing it as well, that you know, back in the early 2000s, this was by the neuroscience community considered a little bit of bunk. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and fortunately, they, you know, they, they, they asked the Dalai Lama to come and talk at the Society of Neuroscience, and they formed this whole thing con called contemplative neuroscience. Um, uh, and, and it changes you. Uh, there are now that we are able to do what's called diffusion tractography and, and uh, uh, various forms of functional MRI, we can see changes in brain activity. Again, what we don't know is, 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 is it a, a permanent effect? You know, is the neuroplasticity that we see in other disorders of the brain, does it persist? But it certainly, uh, I mean, it, it obviously is beneficial. There's thickening of the cortex. There's increased cells in particular parts of the brain, and there are changes in the connectivity of the circuits within the brain that we can see on these various imaging studies. As a neurosurgeon, did it take you a while to accept the viability of meditation, or were you one of those people who picked it up right away and was became a believer? Um, personally, I, I would have to say that uh, in this, in America, uh, how can one say that taking 10 minutes, the ideal is 20 minutes, I only have 10, taking <laughs> 10 minutes twice a day, once in the morning, and winding down, how can one say that that is bad for you? There are, there's no equipment. 
All there is is time commitment. You can do it at home, and there are suggested and now fairly well-founded scientific results that suggest that it's beneficial. So I would submit that the rational mind would accept this and say that they should do it. Can meditation prevent the brain from weakening? And, And what is the relationship we are starting to hear between meditation and Alzheimer's? Yeah, that's right. By saying the brain is weakening, there is some data that suggests, but again, this is all preliminary, that it might slow down uh, certain uh, you know, cellular, cell dying or cell aging in the, in the brain. So to that extent, would it be beneficial or hopefully delay the onset of Alzheimer's? You know, that's a possibility. We don't know the answer to that. Again, <clears throat> what's the downside? to doing something that doesn't, you know, once you learn it, it doesn't cost anything. There's no injections. There's virtually no risk. There really isn't. I can't find a downside to uh, meditation at all, but... uh... Unless, I mean, the only downside that I can envision is if you are a person that has ADDH uh, uh, and uh, uh, you thrive on being able to multitask and by meditating you lose a little bit of that edge, that for that individual, it, 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 you know, it could be a potentially a downside. But beyond that, I can't think of one. Can meditation help with depression and anxiety? There have been suggestions that it does. Uh, uh, certainly, the, the form of compassion and loving, where one can look at stressors uh, or be trained to look at stressors and then how to intellectually, or, or through meditation, learn how to come to terms with those uh, kinds of stimuli. Uh, and there are suggestions and there have been studies that do show that patients that uh, are anxious and depressed do derive benefit from mindfulness training. As a neurosurgeon, where are you seeing the most positive effects of meditation? For us at the Wild Cornell Spine Center, we're finding that the application of both mindfulness training with cognitive uh, remediation uh, can be as beneficial as some of the standard conservative forms of therapy for low back pain. Mm. So uh, yeah, that is a, a direct and an immediate application, and that was recently published within the past year in the Journal of the American Medical Association, the benefits of, of, of mindfulness training. So we immediately started to implement that on a larger scale, and uh, we are seeing the benefits. It seems to me that uh, some of these uh, positive effects that you're talking about with meditation could lessen the need for medication, and how can that be a bad thing? I would think. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, certainly in the, you know, if, if one can overcome anxiety and then uh, get off of their anxiolytic drugs, I, I, you know, again, that, that's the, the upside to this. I'm, and again, mm-hmm. I'm not purporting that everybody will get off their, their drugs, uh, mm-hmm. you know, getting off the serotonin reuptake uh, medications for their depression and, you know, the Valium that they t- might take for, for uh, anxiety. Uh, this certainly should be done under the care of, their, uh, of a physician, but it can be be done in conjunction with the physician. And final question, could you talk to us about brain scans? So uh, a a CAT scan uses radiation, ionizing radiation, to create an image of the uh, the brain or the spine. It's particularly good at looking at things like blood and bone, but with finer techniques now, it's getting better at looking at the soft tissue. On the flip side is what's called a magnetic resonance imaging or MRI technique, which doesn't use any radiation, therefore it's uh, advantageous. Uh, the, the downside of the MRI is the cylinder that you lay in is a little bit small, and some patients have trouble with claustrophobia. But that being said, the MRI is much better at looking at the soft tissue, meaning looking at the brain substance itself and, and helping us decide whether there is some pathology going on within the brain substance. Then there, there are subcomponents of the MRI called functional MRI, where we can look at your brain and see where the motor and the visual cortex is. There's diffusion tractography imaging, which is looking at the fiber tracks in the brain and how regions connect. That's of importance for us when we're thinking about doing surgery and how to avoid damaging those tracks. 
Other imaging techniques that we use are uh, uh, SPECT scanning, which is a nuclear scan. We're not using that as much anymore. And then there's a, a, an imaging study called PET scanning, uh, which there's MRR PET and uh, uh, nuclear PET scanning. And this allows us to look at the brain at a molecular level. You inject a particular marker, uh, and then you can trace where that uh, is visualized within the brain. Well, this has been fascinating. Anything else to mention when it comes to the brain and meditation? I think the one other thing that you you talked about is is when a person meditates, we not only see a a change in the stress hormone secretion, but there's also a reduction in inflammation, which if, again, one practices meditation over a long period of time, reduction in inflammation can also have cardiovascular benefits, i.e. it reduces the incidence of blood vessel disease. And as you know, heart disease is the number one, uh, number one killer in America. Stroke is the number one disabler in America. So again, I uh, think that the, the, the application of, of meditation can be uh, systemically beneficial uh, for patients. Well, talking with Dr. Philip Stieg about meditation this morning. Thanks for joining us and taking the time. Pat, it's always a pleasure.